These are soil samples taken from five recent UFO landing sites and are fairly representative of uh, some two to three hundred UFO landing sites that I have personally been involved with. Each of the pins in this map represents a UFO landing site that has been reported to Ted Phillips in the last eight years. There are over a hundred and fifty UFO landing sites represented on this map. I've investigated a rather high percentage of these reports personally and have found a remarkable consistency in size and shape uh, regarding the UFO scene and the ground effects resulting from that UFO landing. We find imprints left evidently by the landing gear of the object, some of these indicating tremendous pressure, uh, great weight, generally uh, found as three or four in number arranged in either a triangular or rectangular pattern. We have effects on witnesses, such as the witnesses suffering what appears to be a sunburn effect on their face, neck, and hands, following the close approach of a UFO, extreme dryness of the nasal area, extreme dryness of the throat. I have talked with nearly 2,000 people who have had a UFO experience, and those people uh, certainly have convinced me that something very real is going on. This is a small portion of the soil taken from a UFO landing site in Delphos, Kansas. The soil in the UFO landing ring is extremely dehydrated and is unable to absorb water. Instead, it simply floats. Soil taken only a few feet away that was not part of the UFO landing ring behaves normally. Within a few seconds, it absorbed the water that we poured on it. Besides being unable to absorb water, UFO-affected soil cannot support seed germination and plant life. Soil taken a few feet away does support normal plant growth. No matter how vivid a hallucination is, it cannot dehydrate soil. 80% of the descriptions of a UFO in Ted Phillips' files are of a disc-shaped object between 10 and 35 feet in diameter. Over 400 of the landing cases in these files involve more than one witness observing a UFO for longer than one minute at a distance of less than 250 feet. We're talking about people, uh, police officers, clergymen, newsmen, business people, people in all walks of life from all parts of the country who have had real UFO experiences, and in many cases, a very close range. The interesting thing is that these people could witness a murder, could go into court, testify to that effect, put a, a man away for life, and yet those same people have a UFO experience and their testimony is no longer valid. That's certainly a very strange uh, set of double standards that we have in this country. It's difficult to understand. During the past 10 years, I've talked with uh, over two dozen military personnel who have confidentially uh, relayed cases involving uh, not only landings very near or on military installations in this country, but also cases involving physical residue. In one instance, uh, an individual assured me that he had personally seen to the transmission of this report to Project Blue Book, and this was a report involving a landing and quite a number of, of witnesses, security personnel. And if one is to check the Blue Book files, the files that have been opened to the public, those cases are not there, not a single case.